Okay, let's go ahead and get started with our um, second video. Um, this video is going to be over 4.9, unit 4.9, um, and we're going to really kind of try to establish that unit rate is um, equivalent to what slope is. We're hoping to uh, really be able to establish that um, unit rate here is, is no different than what we, um, what slope is. Um, and so, as we did in our first video, um, the 4.8 video, we really showed that um, how linear relationships were proportional, and how the graph of a linear relationship is going to increase or decrease at the same rate. Um, and that rate of change, or that rate that is increasing or decreasing, is going to be our slope. Um, well, now we're going to take that slope that we've kind of shown that it's consistent throughout these linear relationships and um, really kind of prove that the slope is, is no different than, than finding unit rate. Um, it's been a while since we've done the unit rate, so I wanted to go over a few examples so that it was fresh in our mind. Um, the first example was 270 uh, miles in four hours. Now, 270 miles is a rate. We've studied rates already. Rates are a comparison. It's, you know, it's basically a comparison of two numbers using division um, with two different units. Um, so it's a ratio that uses two different units. Um, where you can see the unit being miles and hours, um, and it's comparing those two using division, um, which is why we can write it as a fraction. Um, a unit rate is a special type of rate. A unit rate is a, a any rate that has a 1 in the denominator. Okay, so that's our whole goal is to get it per 1 hour. Um, as of now, it's taking 270 miles, which is the total amount that was traveled, if this is an example of traveling, and it took 4 hours to get there. Um, that's a great rate. We understand that for what it is. But we want to know if we traveled 270 miles in a total of four hours, how many miles did we travel in one hour? We want to break it down to get it per one unit, whatever that one unit is. Um, in this case, it is hours. And that per one unit needs to be in the denominator. So we got to ask ourselves, if there's four hours um, and we need to get it down to one hour, what are we ended up ending up doing to be able to get down to this? Well, um, we need to split it into four different groups. And the way we split it into four different groups is we um, divide it by four. So by taking four divided by four, we get one hour. Then we take 270, and this is going to probably give us a decimal, divided by four. Yep, we're going to get 67.5 miles. What this means is we're really traveling in hour one, 67.5 miles, in hour two, 67.5 miles, in hour 3, 67.5 miles, in hour 4, 67.5 miles. We're traveling these each this amount of distance each time. So if we add those up, or you can just take it times 4, you can see that in the end we will have traveled the full 270 miles. And if each one of these were one hour, we have one hour, two, three, four. So it's another way to be able to represent where we were at. Um, so we were at 270 miles in four hours. What they asked us to do is say break it down into one hour um, or per unit. Um, for the record, we also know that this was the, the, the speed or the rate at which they were traveling. Um, and we always, when we, we, we use speed or rate, we always compare it to the unit or to one. And so we were able to take the 270 miles in four hours and, and simplify it down to 67.5 miles in one hour. Looking at the next example, 640 feet in two seconds. Um, we want to know now how many feet are being traveled in one second. Well, the way we do that is we're going to divide by two because we need it. there are two groups here. We need to cut those two groups so that we can only look at one. Um, so 640 divided by two would give us 320 feet per second. This is a unit. Um, 
so in both of these examples, we were able to take it from just a rate to being a unit rate. Okay, let's look at our first example. Um, you guys should now be able to take notes along with us because this is on your paper. Uh, now that we understand unit rates, we should be able to make our way through this. Um, we've also are going to tie in our independent and dependent rates, our variables that we had talked about uh, earlier in the week. Okay, Ashley is charging $15 for babysitting three hours. When we know that $15 for um, three hours, if we write that out using our independent and dependent um, variables, we're going to say that the amount of money that Ashley makes is going to depend on the amount of hours that she works. And so if we know that the money is going to depend on hours, then money is going to be our dependent variable, and hours is going to be our independent our dependent variable is always our y, and so I'm going to write in money here. And our um, independent variable is always our x, and so I'm going to write hours here. So as you can see, the, the table that we're starting to build um, definitely demonstrates, I'll move these over, demonstrates um, that we have one, two, three, four, five hours, and we're going to try to figure out um, how much money she gets for each one. Um, right now, they gave us a rate. Okay, move this over here. A rate being fifteen dollars for three hours. Problem is, we need to know how much does she make for one hour. Okay, because right now, after three hours, we know she makes fifteen dollars. We don't know how much those she makes for one hour. Um, and so if we're going to try to figure out what she makes for one hour, really what we're f figuring out is just um, a unit rate. And so because if we divide three divided by three, we'll get our one hour. So we're going to divide by three as well up here. We're going to find out that really she's just making $5 an hour. So for hour one, she would make $5. Um, if we know that for each hour she works, she makes $5, then after two hours, she would have two groups of five, which would be $10. Now you should be able to see the linear uh, progression here, and we're going up, adding five each time. So we're going to add five here to get 20, and we're going to add another five here to get 25. Okay, um, so we were able to use the rate that they gave us. Uh, to find out that it was five dollars per one hour, um, to be able to also fill in this table and to make the table. Uh, like we talked about in the last video, this is going to be a linear progression, so it's going to have that constant rate of change. Now, the origin. What does the origin represent? If we were to graph this, Let's go ahead and do that now so we can figure out what that origin is. Um, this is our x and this is our y. Uh, the y is already written there. I'm going to put my arrow here. It kind of got cut off. Um, and since we know our x-axis is hours, I'm going to write hours in here. I'm going to kind of space it out a little bit because we don't have that many. So I'm going to skip a box in between. So first hour, second hour, third hour, fourth hour, fifth hour, sixth hour. And then um, for the dollars, I'm going to skip a box as well. Um, money is going to be our Y. I'm going to put 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35. So as you can see, this represents the money, um, and 40 being the most money that can be represented on this graph, and $5, uh, actually 0 being the least. So now the question is, what does this origin represent? Well, right here at the 0, 0 point, that is our origin. Okay? Um, and so we're asking, what does that point represent? Well, what it represents is we haven't worked any hours, 
taxes are at zero, and we haven't made any money. Um, so it's going to be our starting point, um, and it it represents that uh, you know zero hours and zero money or zero dollars. It's going to be where where we begin. Okay. Now let's go ahead and graph everything. We know that one after one hour we made five dollars, so we're going to put that point there. Remember, this is a linear progression, so as we're doing this, we should find out that this forms a straight line. So if we go up three hours, we had fifteen. Four hours, we had twenty. And five hours, we had twenty-five. As you can see, we are definitely forming this linear progression. We're going up at a constant rate of change, that rate of change being uh, $5 for every uh, one hour. We can show this over the rise over run. As you can see, we're going to make this jump right here. Well, naturally, we would look at it and say, oh, that's two boxes, so we're rising two. Uh, but we have to ask ourselves, what is the two boxes represent. And they don't mean two boxes, they mean five dollars. When we're jumping from this point to this point, we're going from five to ten. So we're really going up five dollars. And then when we go from this point for our run over, yes, we are going over two boxes, but what do those represent? We're going from here to here, from one to two, which is one hour. So our slope in this case is really going to be five dollars per hour or our slope is going to be five over one which is just five. Unit rate is slope. Okay, This is what our unit rate was, five dollars per hour. That's the increase. That's the rate at which this line is increasing. It will always increase because it's linear. Um, the whole goal of today is for you to be able to realize that what we're doing here with unit rate and by finding that ahead of time we're really just finding the slope of the line. And we can now use this slope to kind of predict what's going to happen in the future. Okay? Um, so if we continue here, what does the point 525 represent? Well, 525 represents that after five hours, we made $25. And now finally, what is the slope of the graph? The slope of the graph is 5, and what that means is we're making $5 per one hour. Our unit rate and slope are, are the exact same thing. Um, be careful when you're calculating your slope, because the natural thing would just be to go up two spaces, over two spaces, which would give us a slope of 1, which is incorrect. Um, we're actually, you've got to take it in context of, of what the scenario is. If we were just graphing points and we didn't have a scenario where we were talking about money and hours and we weren't graphing the entire uh, money in hours, then yeah, you would be right. If these were just random points, we'd be going up to, over to, up to, over to. But because there's a scenario with it, we have to ask ourselves, what do these boxes represent? And each one of these increase is for one box is going to be an increase of two dollars and fifty cents and for going over one box it's going to be a half hour or thirty minutes okay all right i hope that explains and starts to connect the dots between unit rates and slope and showing you that they're really just the same there is another example here i want you to take the the time to do this example by yourself Remember, go back in the video if you need to to get some additional tips. Um, but you've got four dollars and twenty-four cents per gallon. Um, the nice thing about this, if they give us to us, that's four dollars and twenty-four cents per one gallon. It's already a unit rate, and so to determine the unit rate, we really have nothing to, that we have to find out here. It's still going to be 424 per one gallon. And as we saw in the last one, we know that that's going to end up being slow. But I don't want to jump ahead too far. Make sure you fill in this table. Um, find out what depends on what. Um, and put your independent and dependent variables in your table. 
and go ahead and uh, try to calculate it. Notice this jump here from 3 to 12. Be very careful. You can't just keep adding. You're going to have to take that into account as well. Um, I hope that helps. Good luck, and we'll talk about this in class tomorrow.